Do you want to learn BlenderBim? Once you start Blender, however, you feel instantly sucked into a multiverse of possibilities. Versatility is surely one of Blender's best features, but as a new user, it can leave you feeling an incredible amount of FOMO. And for good reason. There are more than a few useful features hiding in some of the standard Blender workspaces coming with its default setup. Welcome back. This is me, Christina. And my superpower is helping creative people get the best of Revit faster. However, today I'm moving on with my Blender BIM journey. And before focusing solely on Blender, I will take you on a complete tour of the Blender interface so that we can evaluate together what features could potentially come in handy when it comes to architectural and structural models. By the end of this video, you're definitely not going to be a Blender Pro. However, you will have an essential understanding of the capabilities of Blender, and you will be able to leverage that to your advantage while you're creating your IFC models. So let's move on to the laptop. So what is a workspace to begin with? A workspace in Blender is nothing more than a combination of different viewports and menus that allow you to focus on a particular task in your project. As you can see, once you start Blender, all of its standard workspaces are lined up horizontally. And in case some of these workspaces do not work for your project, you can easily select and delete the ones that are not necessary. And in case later on in the project they become useful, you can come here and add the same standard workplace and even place it in its original location. On top of that, you can easily customize any workspace, starting with its name. Just double click. And enter your new name. You can easily stretch the boundaries of each window pane and Change the purpose of each window pane by clicking on the drop down upper left icon. For example, I would like to turn my 3D viewer into an image editor. The outline of my project I would like to change to file browser and maybe the properties to a Python console. In case I don't need a certain window pane, I can easily merge the window panes, click on the border of any of the window panes you'd like to join, go for the join option, and make sure to let the software know which is the primary space or the primary window pane you'd like to leave. And as you can see, I easily rearranged the original layout of my workspace. And in case I would like to maybe later on add a certain window pane, once again, go to the boundary. I will pick a vertical split. And change the purpose here to properties. As you can see for yourself, Blender has a variety of standard workspaces. However, some of them are much more specific and much more oriented towards 3D artists. So we can delete them right away to focus on the workspaces that can come in handy for structural engineers and architects. Let's start by sculpting, which as the name suggests, allows you to modify meshes and sculpt characters, you will definitely make the best of this workspace if you have a drawing tablet and a pen. However, for us, it won't be that useful, so we can safely delete it. Another workspace that is focusing on artistic impression is the texture paint. As the name suggests, you can easily 
paint over your object to create specific uh, nuances and details. But for us, it won't be that useful. So we can also safely delete it for now. Another workspace that focuses on texture and how it wraps up around your object is the UV editing uh, workspace. You can unwrap your object. Well, this particular workspace can be useful when it comes to rendering your textures accurately. But for now, when it comes to modeling alone, maybe we can also decide to delete it. Blend is also very popular when it comes to 3D animation. And for example, you can easily add a keyframe to your object. in your timeline. To create a simple animation, However, for us, this won't be that important. So we can easily delete that workspace as well. And the last workspace that is also in a way related to 3D animation that we are just going to delete is compositing. It's once again, a very complicated and artistic concept. Uh, it allows you to render it, each object in your scene separately and then combine them together for the most interesting and captivating results. Managed to significantly reduce the number of our workspaces, but believe it or not, we can even go a little bit further. The layout and the modeling workspace are co almost completely identical. The only difference is that when it comes to layout, the object mode is on. And when it comes to modeling, the edit mode that allows us to access different aspects of our cube geometry is active. However, we can easily switch between modes with the tab key of our keyboard. So we can just go ahead and delete layout and focus on modeling alone. One of the most important things when it comes to the object mode is to learn how to duplicate our objects. There are two different ways to go about it. With Shift D, you duplicate the original geometry. However, you do not maintain the connection between the original object and the new object. And if you go for Alt D, from the keyboard, you create a new object, but maintain the connection between the geometry of the original object and the geometry of the new object. And if we switch back to edit mode, and we decide to extrude the top face of this cube, you can see that when it comes to the object that was duplicated with Alt D from the keyboard, the geometry is also edited simultaneously with the geometry of the original object. One of the most common tasks in any 3D modeling software is to create a material. And uh, with the shading workspace, you can really do that using notes that help you 
with the process. Um, there are a lot of tutorials about it. However, we are going to create a very simple texture, very fast. Select your object, hit new, give a name to your material, and with Shift A, you can add different nodes that help you flesh out your texture. You can learn about this process in different tutorials. However, just playing around with it always helps. And I would say Blender is extremely powerful because most of the materials you will create will not be flat, but actually will have the option to be three-dimensional. I'm searching for the bump node. I will readjust it to height. And as you can see, we have a little bit of difference between the mortar and the bricks. Now that we have created our first material, it's time to do some rendering. Actually, Blender has not one, but three rendering engines. And uh, in case you don't want any troubles with uh, your computer, just stay with Eevee for now. However, when it comes to the rendering uh, workspace, once again, I would say that it's not entirely necessary. So we can just delete it. And to create a rendering, our first step in our modeling workspace would be to activate our camera with zero and to further adjust the way our camera looks at our objects. Let's go for the sidebar and click on camera to view. And now we can further adjust how our objects will be viewed through our camera. We can pick a rendering engine. Cycles is a bit more sophisticated one. EV is a lifetime rendering machine. For now, we are going to go with EV alone. And to complete our rendering, just hit F12. And there we are. Just for comparison, let's go for cycles. And in case you use cycles, make sure to be in shading mode here in your workspace viewport and let's see the results one great way to display changes to a certain geometry without actually applying them is to add modifiers for example i would like to smooth the edges of this cube a little bit And we can easily see how this works out in real time. And if we'd like to confirm the changes, we can just go for Control A or hit Apply here. However, sometimes you don't have the right modifier. And in place of that, we have the option to create our own with the geometry nodes. And here, the geometry nodes Workspace is actually very useful. You can select your object, create your own new modifier, and start composing your nodes. In many ways, it's very similar to Dynamo, if you've already worked with Revit. 
with Shift-A, you can add different nodes. For example, I want to distribute some points on my face. Maybe place some instances of an object on my points. I can search for nodes. easily and change my output. And if I'd like to confirm the changes later on, I can once again hit Control A or just apply the changes. All right, so we finally arrived at our last workspace. In many ways, uh, much like other 3D softwares, Blender has its API exposed. This is very important as when you deal with a building informational model, it's very convenient to be able to access uh, and build on the experience of the software you are working with. So you can easily extract data and get a much more detailed picture of the different information that is stored in the model. And here I will just show you a quick sample of code that will add another property to this uh, cube in our scene. Let's paste our code. Once we run the script, the new function will be loaded into the model. And as you can see, when it comes to our cube, we have a new property called Hello World panel. Thanks for making it till the end of this video. And if you're looking for more Blender BIM and Revit tips, make sure to like and subscribe.